Welcome everyone to the new Fly Fisher. This week we're in the remote north woods of Maine at Libby's Camps. Here we're going to be searching for wild eastern brook trout and landlocked salmon on a variety of rivers and small lakes. I can't wait to get going, so let's go fishing. That's a nice sized fish. What? <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. The new Fly Fisher is supported by Maine Office of Tourism, Orvis Fly Fishing, Scientific Anglers. Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada, This region is visually spectacular. Wild as it gets, rich in sporting tradition, and the people that live here are as real as they come. Join me now for a glimpse into Northern Maine and some of the finest fly angling in the East. Libby Camps is a drive-to facility, or if you'd rather, just a quick 20-minute flight from the town of Millinocket. Located on the eastern shore of Millinocket Lake, Libby's acts as the base camp for their fishing and hunting operations, and is as comfortable as it is beautiful. For our first day on the water, we were guided by Libby's operations manager, Scott Story. And Scott took no time at all, giving us a rundown on this particular stretch of water. Get it moving, don't let it lay there. Okay, we'll step towards me a little bit. We'll work our way right down, cover the ground. Where these two rivers come together, it hits that, that large uh, ledge over there and it's dug a pretty nice trench through here and the salmon will hang in here and the brook trout will hang in here. It's nice water. Yeah, it's beautiful water and we've gotten here early enough so that it's shadowed right now, which is usually uh, uh, the biggest help to, for things to happen in here, either the overcast or the shadowing. Once we get down here a little bit further to the end, it drops right down into a real deep, deep pocket. Right. And a lot of times, especially during warmer water, the fish will hold right in there, but, uh, this is, this is a beautiful spot. It's one of my favorites up here. And we'll have, you said we'll have a combination of both brook trout and landlocked salmon brook in here? Brook trout and salmon in here. Yeah, this will hold some nice salmon. We've, we've caught some pretty good sized salmon out of here. 16, 18 inches, uh, nice fat salmon. We can't stress enough the importance of learning to roll cast. When you're fishing trout streams like we're on here in the north woods of Maine, you're seldom in a position where you can get a legitimate back cast. These alders here, it just makes it impossible. So get out on the water and just practice moving your line with waterborne casts. This is what we refer to as a waterborne cast. I don't have the ability, as I just said, to throw the line up there, it's just gonna to continue to get caught. But when you get it down, you'll see automatically the importance of being, to, of being able to deliver a fly without a back cast. Practice your roll casting. Oh, there he is. Oh, nice. Oh, that's a, a rookie. Nice, nice, sweet brook trout there. 
There we go. Nice, nice brook nice trout. Nice brookie. Hey, buddy. Thanks, pal. Hey, that's a sweet that's awesome. fish. I got nice the net. fat fish. I'm gonna wet my hands so we don't uh, scuff him up too bad. Oh, that's nice, nice brook trout right there. I'll take those all day. Yeah. Nice looking fish, huh? Love them. I love them. All right. There you go, buddy. All right. Nice job. Nice job. Well, he said he'd be. All right. Trust your guide. We're off and That's running. all I can say. The skunk is off. Trust your guide. <laughs> There we go. Ooh, another nice brookie from the looks. Nice. nice, nicely done, nicely done. This one's not quite as big as the last one you caught, but yeah, it's still a brook still trout. Still a handsome fish. Yeah. I mean, native Maine brook trout right there. It doesn't get any finer. No, it doesn't. Look they're, at they're that just, guy. They're just spectacular. You know, that one's not quite as fat. You can see he's probably as long as the other one, but that other one was a little more yeah. girthy. Yeah. Yeah, handsome fish, handsome fish. Yep. About two casts ago, I made an Aaron cast, and I don't know that I tied a knot, but it just looks like looked like it kind of collapsed. Check your leaders, guys and girls. If if you're not sure, and even it even pays, it even pays every half hour or so to just run your run your fingers down your leader. I'm fishing, I think, 12 pound test fluorocarbon right now, so it's not as critical. But if you're fishing 5X tippet and and you've got a knot in it, your 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 game is your game is over before it started because it will break on a hook set. While the river had treated us well, despite the high skies and sunshine, we had the notion that when the sun came over the pool, the fish would become a little more aware precipitating the need for a presentation change. So we'll want to start like right in here, mm -hmm. get it up, let it drop right down into that trough. So we we just came off of, of fishing streamers through here and we had a good good shadow on the far side and, and on the on the heart of the run. Scott has recommended that we switch to an indicator and nymph rig, which I love, and we're gonna hit him with another presentation. Come on, come on. You're down there. There. That's a fish. There you go. Nice. There you go. Nice job. Nice. <laughs> we knew he was oh, in there. I love that. <laughs> he got the Copper John on the bottom. Nice. Oh, nice fat brookie. Look at that. There you <laughs> go. Huh? No, that's a beautiful fish. Yeah, they're they're just they're so they're so pretty. Yeah, the color, the the, the fuchsia with the halos, the blue halos. It just they don't get any prettier than that. Yeah. We continued to fish, but things had slowed considerably, and not even the enormous caddis hatch turned the trout on for the afternoon shift. With our day nearing a close, we decided to try one more beat on the way back to camp. You said don't mend. You don't mind that sort of swinging downstream? Oh, there you go. Nice. Nice. All right. All right. No, you, you want it to get that swing going. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right there. Nice. Nice. Nice brook trout. One of the prettiest fish that swims. Yeah, they know, really they, are. They really are. These ones that come out of Moose Lake Stream, too. So. I can show you. He's not a horse, but obviously they're just, they're gorgeous. That's a good, uh, but good look way at, to start though. Look at the, the, colors, the yeah. colors, the blue halos around and the, the yellow and the yellows. They're just, they're spectacular yeah. fish. There you go, buddy. There you go. As the clouds began to roll in, we quickly withdrew from the water as we began to hear and see thunder and lightning. So we got off the water uh, about half an hour ago, we drove to a new spot. We got caught in a bit of a storm. We got here and the, he the, the heavens opened up. Even with good rain gear, with the amount of, of electricity in the air, get off the water. You don't want to be out near anything tall 
and especially with a nine foot conductor in your hand. So point is, when you see this stuff coming in, give yourself some time and head for the hills. For our second day on the water, we were joined by Toby Montgomery. Our destination was one of the many small lakes within driving distance of the camp. While Toby is known by many as the moose god for his prowess and big game guiding, it was clear from the start that he knew more than a thing or two about the fly fishing game. And I was on my way to a master class in stillwater angling. Just pretend like you, you don't want the fish to really get a good look at that fly. Oh, so work it a little faster? Yeah. Okay. And a lot of times those fish will hit it when you're, when you're letting go of the line and you'll just feel the line stop. Yeah. There's a fish. There you go. Nice, 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 nice. Stop coming back at me. He's dancing. There we go. We're on the board. Nice. Woo! Oh, that's a pretty fish. That's a good, pretty chunky fish. Yeah. Very good 12 nice. inches. Nice wild Maine brook trout. So basically, when I'm stripping it in, I aim the rod right at the fly. I just kind of balance the rod. I don't hang on to it very hard. I, I drape the line over my finger. So I'm just kind of letting it hang down like that. I'm not. I'm not gripping the rod real tight. Right. See, the rod's not moving at all. You can hold it above the water. Sometimes I just put the rod tip right in the water. Sure. If you rest your elbow on your knee, on your leg like this, you'll miss a lot of you'll fish. You'll lose the feel? Okay. You'll miss a lot of fish. Okay. So I just sit more upright and it's pretty effective with streamer flies also. There's one. That's, that's a good fish too. That's a good fish too. So Toby, Toby gave me very specific instructions on how to, uh, how to retrieve this. He said to me, uh, two casts before, he said, don't be afraid to rip that a little faster. He said, they're aggressive and you're not gonna spook them. So I, I did and, and, and this guy took, what a beauty. I'm coming in. I'm coming in. There we go. Yay! We're on the board with a big one. How big is he? About 16? Uh, 16 or 17 inches long and about 15 inches around. <laughs> this is a beast. And I'm not worried about the gnat. Beautiful fish. Here's another prime example of, of trusting, trusting your guide. I asked Toby earlier about working the shorelines. Um, th th I mean, that's typically how I would fish a lake like this, just cruise the shoreline, kind of running and gunning. Um, but with his year's experience on this lake, he's determined a couple of high percentage spots. We happen to be sitting on about six feet, but it's dropping at where I'm casting into about 10 feet, you said, Toby? And, and, and there's a gradual sort of rise. And those fish, I, I, haven't hooked, I haven't hooked a fish yet at the full length of my cast, and I'm casting about 50 feet. Uh, they all seem to come about midway or closer to the boat. And I think what we're getting is, is these fish are suspended on this hump They've still got cover, which they want, but here we are out in the, basically in the middle of the lake. And as I said, Toby's identified this as, as a high percentage spot. And uh, I'd say we're doing pretty good so far. Come on, baby. Come on, baby, pull my wire. Come on, baby, come on. Just give me one more big 
beautiful brookie. A BBB. That's what I'm looking for. There we go. There we go. That's a mid mid range fish. I'd say. It's nice. We took a get out of there. Get out of there. I'm not getting late get in that rope. Oh boy. One of the one of the difficult things when you're when you're fishing with these sinking lines in a canoe is it's hard to get that line back on your reel. So don't worry about it in the beginning. Just just play it off the off the um, handle. Use your finger as your control, and you can still give them plenty of line. These you know these fish aren't eight pounds, but um, don't try and, and and get the line back on your reel. You just end up you'll just end up fudging it. You know, this is a six weight rod and I'm, I'm leaning on it pretty good as you can see and I'm not, I, I, I ain't in control yet. He's coming up, coming up. Ooh. He's doing, he's doing to spin. <laughs> there we go. Nicely done, Toby. I think my, my takeaway from this still water experience is going to be a tip that Toby gave me earlier or when we first got to the lake. Rather than when I'm retrieving this fly, rather than retrieving it with the line out of the water and a lot of movement in the rod tip like this, he was, he was very adamant about keeping the rod tip still, pointing it right at the fly, basically, and really reducing the movement on the rod tip. And I will say that I, I'm able to stay in contact far better with that fly. And I'm feeling every, every tap and grab, not that they're tapping and grabbing. I mean, they're just kind of crawling on. But a good tip is just to leave that rod tip in the water and you really reduce the movement and you're not compromising the feel as, as you would be with the rod up here with a lot of movement in the rod tip as you're retrieving. There's one. This feels like a, this feels like a good fish. This feels like a good fish. Oh yeah, he bulldog him. He is staying down. It's hard, you know, fishing from a canoe, it certainly gets, I mean, this is the only way you could fish this lake. Um, so you, you, you know, you, you, you gotta take what you get. Um, but it's just hard to maneuver a little bit, and but I'm not complaining because we are catching, we are getting, we are into some beautiful fish. This this is a nice fish, Toby. This is a, this is probably a 16 incher. This is a, uh, this is a this is a six weight. And and like I said, I'm, I'm not giving him anything. But they're strong. This water is still nice and cold. It's, it was a. Uh, about 63 degrees, the surface temperature. So you know, down, down deep, it's, it's, it's colder. These fish are plenty healthy. Good gracious, that is a big old brookie. This is where you want to make sure that you're not bringing that fly rod or that fly line in side the guides. If he, if that, if I'd have had that happen. A minute ago and that fish bolted like that, you got a real good shot of, that's a nice fish. That's a nice fish. You got a real good shot of breaking them off, so keep your fly line outside of the um, rod tip and uh, you'll be far better off. Thanks again, Toby, that's just a sensational trout. There we go. There we go. Ooh, oh, nice that's fish. good fish. Nice fish. That's good fish too. Yeah, man. Hundred yards of line at my feet here. I'd like to get him on the reel. It's coming up. 
coming up and he's on the reel not quite as big as I thought but still a good good fish they're all good fish I'd call it better than average that hook popped out nicely look how fat these fish are he is they're just they're so girthy just so oh, I just love brook trout I love them go away virtual fist pump from the back of the canoe thanks again wunderbar The facilities here are unbelievable. Like it's, it's been around a long time, but it's really well maintained. Everything you need is here. You can pack light. I came from Doylestown, Pennsylvania, and it's the first fishing trip that I've ever had by myself. And the staff are just fantastic people, right? Just really, really welcoming. They care that you have a fantastic time, and the food is just remarkable. Oh, 100%. Yeah, I, I think I'll be back. Maybe bring the family. It's just unbelievable. You can come here and have a fishing trip or a family vacation. This is day two of our still water fishing, and we made the decision yesterday to come back to the same lake. It was so productive yesterday that we thought, why leave fish to find fish. It just makes sense. If you know what's working, stick with it. Now let's get after it. Oh, there's a fish. Again, close to the boat, just as Toby was saying, they'll, they'll follow it for a long ways, it seems. This feels like a heavy fish. Now again, because this fish took so close to the boat, I've got a lot of line at my feet, about 40 feet of line at my feet, and I'm not gonna risk messing this up by trying to get that line on. If the fish takes it, I'm gonna feather it through my, through my, my index finger on the rod hand, and hopefully he'll take enough line out that I can then put it on the reel. But I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna risk messing this up just to get the fish on the reel. Yeah, that's a good, you know, that's a good average. Maybe a little fighting big. Whoop, watch your, watch your, your, yeah. On the inside of the anchor. I'll just see if I can coax him back out. Don't do that at home, kids. <laughs> but we had to avoid the anchor rope, so. Toby has pretty good situational awareness in his boat. The fishing continued to be hot for the rest of the day, due largely to Toby's guidance. For a guy that doesn't do a lot of still water fishing, his tips on presentation and constant reminders were the game changer for this trip. I never pass up the chance to learn new things, and these were lessons that I'll take with me whenever chasing fish on lakes and ponds. I've been guiding in Libby's camps, uh, hunters and fishermen, for 30 years. To be a guide, you really have to love what you're doing. They may say what they want to do, but you have to figure out what, what their expectations are and then try to make that come true for them, whether it be learn to fly fish or catch a big trout or see moose or some people just enjoy being out here so you uh it's it's not all about hunting and fishing it's it's a lot more about reading the people and finding out what's going to make their trip you know a joy so that's that's what we try to do There's one. Oh, this is a hot fish. 
on my, I have a bit of a tingle. I have a substantial tangle. Another, another good fish. I, I, I'm sensing this is a big fish and I got a big tangle in my fly line. That whole caveat I was telling you about earlier about having this line at your feet, that is the one, the one drawback to fishing from a canoe, but I think I can manage it. I hope I can manage it. It's a big fish. He's staying down like a, staying down like a big fish. I don't have an anchor rope out the front. No, I'm good, okay. Oh my God. Bang uh, Fish. Oh my God. Uh, Bang out. Another nice average, average fish. I can't see what I'm doing. Yeah, you're on the backside now. Okay. There. Hello. He's headed for the other end of the pond. <laughs> now I'm really at a, now I'm really at a strange angle. Give me a minute so we can get back out there. Got him? Yep. Thank you, sir. Nice fish. That's a little better than average, eh? Yep. Nice, healthy fish. Nice, nice. It was a unique experience staying at Libby's, as it was evident that the camps were historically significant to the region. I sat down for a candid talk with Matt Libby, the fifth generation of the family to own the camps, and he told me the story. Yeah, the camps actually started um, here on Millinocket Lake out in the, on an island in the middle of the lake. Uh, it'd be my great great-grandfather bought them from a guy named Will Atkins. My great-great-grandfather actually started a few years before that in Oxbow with the Libby Hotel. Beautiful hotel and they used to like rave about the place with all the fine china and the gas lamps and like the service that you find in New York City type of stuff way back in Oxbow. Back when my great-great-grandfather started this was a, a two-day canoe paddle upstream from Oxbow to get here and people didn't come for a couple days, they came for a couple months. Yeah, we, we really pride ourselves in the customer service. Um, the fishing here is, is obviously great. Not a ton of places you can go to catch um, a lot of really nice native brookies. Um, that's one of our big reasons for being here. But uh, you know, at the end of the day, if you, if you don't have a good meal and a nice place to sleep, the experience just isn't quite as nice. So that's what we pride ourselves in. There are three and a half million acres in the North Main Woods and plenty of access. So you don't need a float plane, but it never hurts. On our final morning, we took a short flight to another beautiful Northern Main stream, casting the landlocked salmon and more brookies with guide Scott's story. As most Mainers are, Scott is as laid back as it gets and his style of guiding suits all skill levels. Like Toby, He's an outstanding teacher, willing to share his knowledge, and also provide some good laughs. My role here at Libby's Camp is I'm the operations manager. Uh, I, I probably should just be more operational support than manager. There's, there's not a lot to manage here. Uh, we got a great staff. No, I, I mean, I love it here at Libby Camps. This has been a, a, a great opportunity for me. Uh, I come from a uh, a 30 year law enforcement career. I'm retired from that and uh, now I get to do this. I'm, I'm, I tell everybody I'm living the dream up here. I'm going fishing and hunting and with people and I'm flying my airplane and spending time with my dogs. My wife works up here with us part time and uh, so it's great. It's, I'm, I'm living the dream here. So uh, we're going to do pretty much what we did the other day, sort of a, a, a 
pseudo swing and then strip it back along the seam? Right, right. You, it's, it's the same streamer presentation mm -hmm. we were doing the other day. Get it out across the stream. Right. Just as it starts its turn, go ahead but, uh, and start that strip in. And we'll change the strip up a little bit. It's a nice run and down below there we've got some really nice water as well. So the other thing is just be ready. Sometimes even on the landing as it's drifting, sometimes they're it. ambitious enough. So just stay sharp. I'm I, ready, sir. I've watched sir. you fish. You're good. You're I am good. ready. A little more aggressive strip, I think, with okay. these guys. Okay. Coming into this tail out here, I, I like the looks of it. If I was a, if I was a fish, I'd be hanging right in that, right in that tail. The shelf coming across here is what you're talking yeah, right, about. Right at the end of your fly line, or the yellow, right now. That's a huge pocket okay. right there, and that'll hold fish. We just got to get them to partake in the adventure. There's one. There you go. Yep. Nice. There you go. Fish nice. on. Nice. Well done. Fantastic. Yeah, it is. Small salmon. That's not a huge landlocked salmon, but it's just a beautiful specimen. And he's off. Thank you. Nice job. Thank you. Nice. While we had some fun with streamers, the action was not fast and furious, so we mixed it up a bit to see if we could establish a pattern. Staying versatile on the water not only will increase your chances during low activity periods, it will also make you a better all-around angler in the long run. Right in that nice, fast, oxygenated edge right there. Yep. Come on, baby. There's a fish. There you that's go. a little. That's a little salmon. There we go. Good. Nice. Nice. Oh, look at him go. <laughs> you called it, Scott. It's one we were looking it. for. I don't know if it's the one we were looking for, but it's one. It's one. I got a long. Got him on there. that bottom too, on the green. Yeah, we just just made a fly change. Yep. And uh, you said you just wanted something a little. Yeah, some, flies free. Something else to look for. There you go, little bud. Nice fit. There you go, go back and get big. Oh, there look at him go. go. I'm fishing with an abnormally long leader for, for nymph fishing, but there's a reason for it. The river is crystal clear, the sky is high. I want to keep as much of the fly line away from the fish as possible, but also. Because I have Scott to net my fish, I can afford a long leader. The reason I say that is, you don't want, if I was fishing alone and had to net a fish, that would mean I would have to bring my knots inside my guides, and I don't want to do that. But with Scott being able to stand downstream of me and net the fish, it affords me the opportunity to fish the longest leader that I can. As our trip was coming to a close, I couldn't pass up the opportunity to fool around with a dry fly, and I was happy I did. It was a beautiful way to end my trip to Northern Maine and Libby Camps. We used a variety of equipment on this trip to meet the needs of fishing both still waters and rivers. For our dry fly fishing, we kept it simple with a 5 weight, a floating line, and 4 and 5x tapered leaders. We fished nymphs with 5s and 6 weights and our specialized nymph leaders. When we changed it up to streamers, in the rivers, a six weight with a type three, 10 foot sinking tip served us very well. And on the lake, we used a 30 foot, 150 grain sinking line with an intermediate running section. That allowed us to get the fly to the fish at a counted rate, depending on the depth. I'm not gonna sugarcoat this. This may have been one of the 
finest fishing experiences I've ever had. We want to thank Matt Libby and Scott Story and all of their staff for this wonderful experience. From the hospitality to the fishing, everything was top notch. To learn more about this destination and others, visit us at thenewflyfisher.com. Until next time, stay safe and we'll see you on the water. The New Fly Fisher is supported by Maine Office of Tourism, Orvis Fly Fishing, Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada.